Good morning, folks. So today I want to talk about the very frustrating and unfortunate decision of the International Olympic Committee to allow Russia and Belarus to compete in the upcoming Olympics. Now, the IOC will tell you that it is only the athletes that they are allowing to compete, uh, Russian and Belarusian athletes. But of course, this is a smokescreen, um, as we saw in the previous Olympics, where Russia competed under ROC, it was actually something of a favorable rebranding um, to Russia's uh, suffering, suffering from doping and suffering from invasions um, brand. And that, in fact, they just treated it as if they were competing under a normal flag. So it's a total cop out. Um, it was frustrating years ago. Now it is, in light of the full scale invasion, just completely intolerable. Um, Ukrainian athletes, uh, uh, a, a large advocacy organization for athletes called Global Athlete have released a joint statement in which they, you know, say as much. They say that it's uh, just going to serve Russia's propaganda machine, and it is. Um, international sport has always been viewed as a major tool uh, of propaganda for Russia and for authoritarian regimes at large. Of course, uh, one need only think about the uh, the Nazi Olympics um, or the previous and. In China Genocide Olympics, of course, where they were held in China despite China's um, genocide of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. So, and, and, and recall, the Genocide Olympics is the one where we suspect that Xi and, and Putin hit their sort of accord in which Putin would uh, invade, invade Ukraine, win in three days, and then Xi would invade Taiwan. And of course, luckily, thank God, the Ukrainians um, defended themselves, defended all of us, and threw that plan into disarray. But that's what the Olympics have served for, ultimately. They've been this authoritarian um, glory show uh, in which these dictatorships can justify their existences uh, in, their, in their sort of glorious accomplishments uh, to their people uh, and hopefully, in their view, uh, to the world. So, the IOC. <laughs> um, the IOC itself is a deeply corrupt organization with absolutely no accountability. In that sense, it's very much like FIFA. Uh, both organizations are based in Switzerland, where they have this very strange international NGO status. Um, they are inside baseball appointments, act like multinational companies, sort of, except for the fact that they exempt themselves from courts. <laughs> so they have this extraordinary body called the Court of Arbitration for Sport, which essentially makes it so that all doping problems, all rules problems, whatever whatever kind of issues come up, whatever kind of corruption comes up uh, among the federations, because these, these are both federal structures, FIFA and the IOC. So the IOC has all these federations around the world that do um, the various athletics. And of course, FIFA is, I mean, federations right in the name, uh, has the various soccer federations around the world. So um, all of these cases, all of this malfeasance is uh, f funneled into the Court of Arbitration for Sport, which is this entity that is not a legal entity by any standard uh, of a state. It is not a judicial structure. It has no criminal authority. Arbitration's right in the name. Um, and it is funded by the IOC. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, they, they, they literally funnel the cases of their wrongdoing into a court that they control. So this is, this is right on the surface. Horrific. I mean, I mean, imagine if a multinational corporation, Microsoft, let's say, I mean, nothing against Microsoft, but Microsoft's, all of, all of Microsoft's wrongdoing was re referred to the Microsoft court. I mean, we would, of course, be up in arms about that. So it, it's, it's a corrupt structure that basically allows them to sweep anything they don't want to talk about under the rug. It was actually the Court of Arbitration for Sport that once WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, which is also half controlled by um, the IOC. Uh, it's half funded by the IOC and half the members of the board are IOC. So at the end of the day, uh, any decision they want can come out of the World Anti-Doping Agency too. And we've seen that. So when WADA recommended a long-term ban for Russia uh, because of the doping scandal. It was actually the Court of Arbitration for Sport that overturned it and halved the duration of the ban. Of course, the ban is still only a partial ban. It's this 
neutral athletes ban um, and not a full country ban. But one can see what's going on here. So the, the World Anti-Doping Agency is controlled by the IOC. There's no independence. There's no real independence. The court is controlled by the IOC. There's no real independence. Um, you know, all of these various uh, facades of anti-corruption are controlled by the IOC. There's no real independence. So, I mean, it's this, you know, structure filled with conflicts of interest, just filled with conflicts of interest. So it's no wonder that we never see actual reform out of them. It's no wonder that they continue to uh, uh, kowtow and indeed uh, prefer. That's a, the head of the Skiing Federation famously said, everything is easier in dictatorships. You know, they prefer dictatorships because dictatorships uh, are much more their speed. You know, they don't need to deal with uh, uh, the uh, troublesome constituencies that might want things like rights, uh, basic democratic action, uh, no slave labor, maybe. Um, they are willing to pay bribes to members, which, of course, democratic um, countries are not willing to do, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's just this, this dictatorship international sport complex, this superstructure uh, that is yet to be dismantled, despite uh, numerous efforts. So, of course, it can only be hit from the outside, because all of these efforts from the inside are bogus. Um, so from the outside, of course, there's been the famous U.S. investigation of FIFA uh, for wire fraud, uh, bribery, uh, racketeering, and, and, and so on and so forth, which uh, led to, uh, you know, all sorts of um, uh, uh, plea bargains and 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 uh, consequences for all manner of FIFA officials, and in fact, the head of FIFA, uh, Sepp Blatter, had to, had to step down uh, at the time. Uh, uh, but it's but it's very unclear. You know, jo Johnny Infantino is 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 not any better. I mean, it's a the, like this investigation has not necessarily cleaned up the organization at all. It's just it's like any mafia. You know, you cut off the head of the snake. You know. Uh, or the head of the Hydra, I guess, like to grow back. Um, and uh, with regard to the IOC, you know, Thomas Bach, the head of the IOC, is well known for his chummy relationship with Putin. Uh, I mean, he's, you know, another one of these kind of Germans with a long standing relationship with Russia and kind of like Putin Fischer wants to, uh, you know, oh, Russia's, you know, misunderstood and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a really bad position. I mean, so this this news, although extremely unfortunate, um, is not surprising. Uh, much more needs to be done to hold these organizations to account. Uh, very recently, just a few years ago, um, the Congress passed a law called the Rychenkov Anti-Doping Act, um, named after this Russian doping whistleblower, Grigory Rychenkov, uh, that makes it now illegal um, under U.S. law with extraterritorial um, application to engage in these kind of doping conspiracies in international competitions. Um, that is now in its sort of first phase. An individual has been um, charged, an American, with violation of this law. So we'll see where that leads. But really, at the end of the day, um, the only way that this is going to get solved is if we see real criminal investigations and reform from the outside. Long term, we need a totally different structure. We need a structure that's led by democracies, that it's human rights um, at its core, that has basic freedoms at its core, that puts athletes first. Um, so we need to be thinking big picture, just a totally new democratic Olympics.